Hey guys, Carl here. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to do a simple callout title like this right here, where it moves with your product or whatever you're doing with it. Kinda of cool, right? Let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up After Effects. Now that After Effects is open, we're gonna create a new project, pretty simple, new composition. Uh, we want this composition to be 3840 by 2160. And we want the duration to be 60 seconds. One minute, right? And just black is fine for the background. Hit OK. And that'll pop up with what our, what our screen is seeing right now. Next thing we gotta do is we gotta import our um, clip in there. So I'm gonna take our clip and just drag it in. All right. And we're gonna fit it to the screen. So there's our clip. And if I drag it across, you can see it's just like you saw before. Uncolor graded, why not? We can keep it uncolor graded for now. After watching it through a few times, to see where we want this to be. We have our clip imported, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my tracking. So I'm gonna go over here to my tracker, and I'm gonna click on my clip. I'm gonna go track motion. That's gonna be what we wanna use. So we click on track motion and it creates another layer and then a little track point. So you can zoom into that track point and you can see here the center and then you've got one box and two boxes. Grab this, I'm gonna pull it out a little bit. So the bigger you make this box, the more data it's gonna capture as it tracks that. So the smaller it is, you know, the more fine tuned you can get in there, but the bigger it is, the bigger the object is, the the better it's gonna track, honestly. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna throw it over here on this lens, and I'm throwing that center point. If you grab somewhere in that box, you can grab just that center point and move it around, but you wanna keep that in the center. So I'm gonna throw it on the lens, and then I'm going to just fine tune this a little bit. I like it to be bigger. It's gonna take longer to render, but that's okay. I don't mind, because it's gonna do a better job of tracking it in the overall. So I'm gonna go back out to my fit screen so you can see our track point one is located on the lens itself. Well then, there's two ways you can go about this. You can just hit analyze forward and it'll automatically do it on its own, or you can go keyframe by keyframe. So analyze one keyframe forward and you can see my mouse hovering over the keyframe forward button right here. So I'm gonna just see what happens when I do analyze forward, see if it captures the whole lens as it goes. So let's press that now. As you can see, it's following it pretty good. It's not losing it and in the moment. Uh, it's still on it. It's looking pretty good. It's doing a good job. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it falls away. So right now, still staying on it. Still staying on it. Looking good, looking good. I'm gonna stop talking through this because I, I'm pretty sure that can get annoying. So I'll just tell you if anything happens. I don't know if this is boring for you to watch right now, but it keeps the track pretty good. And that's because we have it so big. If we had it smaller, it might lose that like on my fingernail. It just depends on, on how, it, uh, how it tracks. So you can see, it looks like it's almost done tracking. Oh, oh, see, all right, so there you go. Perfect example, it lost it. So what do we do when we lose it? Well, we say sorry to the people we lost it on. I'm kidding. So let's see where we lost it at. So we go back, 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 back. Looks like we have it there still. Open up the motion tracker so we can see where exactly we lost this at. So it looks like we have it still there. Yeah, we definitely lost it over there. So that's, that's a good spot. We kept it there. Okay, so there's where we lose it. It's somewhere in that motion right there. Okay, so let's go back over to this section and we're just gonna analyze forward piece by piece here. So you can see, oh, see we're creating doubles. So let's go ahead and delete all of those out from there. And we'll go back to where our keyframe is. So we have a double there also. So boom, we still have it. And we'll analyze forward from there and we'll see what this does. So analyze forward. Forward. See, it grabs my fingernail. That's the problem. We have to get rid of that fingernail. So we're going to grab this box and put it back on the black again. And then we're gonna go track, analyze forward, forward. See, it grabs my fingernail again. 
And that's nothing you can do about that. It just automatically does that on its own. So you just have to kind of go through and make sure that you're watching this. Um, because if I left it that way, the animation would stay put and the lens would move away from it and it would just look bad. So let's, let's make sure that we have every keyframe at least somewhere centered up on that black of the lens. One more, see how it loses it. And that's because we're moving fast, we're shooting at 24 frames per second, so it creates that motion blur. Sometimes you should shoot at a faster shutter speed when you're doing motion graphics, so you can get away from having that, that um, motion blur. I like to shoot at 24 frames per second. I think it looks more cinematic, just looks better overall. Some people say 30 frames per second is better. Look, bygones be bygones. So you get that motion blur and that gets lost when you're moving something for motion graphics, just so you know. So a lot of times I have to go back in and just make sure that my tracker is actually tracking as I go. So we'll go one. Okay, we'll move that one again. We're coming to the end of this clip, so I'm not too worried about it at this point. The motion graphics will probably be gone. So this is where I'm moving it back and forth. Let's just make sure that we're still staying on that piece there. See, because we have that motion blur again. Okay, so now that we track the motion, our next step is to actually build the callout title that comes out of the lens and attaches itself to it. So we're gonna build the circles first. I like to build you know, a couple of little circles, so let's build those. We'll go up here, we'll um, press on this guy and get our eclipse tool. And now, don't be bashful, click anywhere out here. Uh, go back into composition first and foremost. Don't be bashful, just click a little circle and hit shift to make it uh, you know, a good circle, not oblong or some weird thing. And then zoom in. Right now we have our stroke and our fill. So let's turn off our stroke. Let's make our fill, let's, uh, let's make it black. And then we're gonna hit Y on our keyboard and our Y is going to let us move our anchor point. And we want our anchor point to be in the center of our circle. Um, because that way when we you know, make it go small to big, we can um, make sure it doesn't do it any, any which weird way. And when we line things up together, they'll be lined up. So I always like to put my anchor point in the center of whatever I'm making. So I'm gonna take this guy and I'm going to just duplicate it. So Control D. And now we have a second one. And let's scale that down to, let's say like 70. And we'll make that color, let's go with like teal. I like teal, teal looks good. So you can see we've got our big circle and our little circle. And you know, just for S and G's, shits and gigs, pardon my French. We're gonna duplicate this again and we'll make this one like 40 in the center of that also. And we'll make that color white. So there we've got our three circles and those are gonna be what's attached to the uh, lens when it's moving around. So now I wanna animate these circles and so I'm gonna click on all of them and I'm going to go to scale. So hit S on your keyboard and I'm gonna set a keyframe for them. So I'm gonna click on this little stopwatch here and that creates our first keyframe. So this is my end keyframe because I want them all to end at this size. So I'm gonna drag this out over here and I'm gonna make them all zero. Okay, so there's no more circles there. So that's gonna be the start of our keyframe. Well now I want these all to come up at the same time and end on their other one, on their you know 100% size that I made them. So we're gonna go up to 107% for all of them and we're gonna drag those over on the other side of the zero. So it's gonna go out in to create the center size, which just looks, there's some expressions you can put in to do this for you. I just like to animate it myself. I want these all to kind of expand separately, so I'm gonna kind of separate them out a little bit also, the keyframes. And then we want these to ease in, so I'm gonna click and drag over all of them I'm gonna right click on these guys. I'm gonna go down here to keyframe assistant and I'm gonna hit easy ease or you can hit F9 on your keyboard also. And that made all of them easy ease. And now I'm gonna go into our graph editor. I hit this at speed. You can go down here and right click on this and you can hit, edit, you can right click anywhere in your, in your graph over here and you can say edit speed graph. 
and I'm gonna grab all my keyframes and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna drag these so they have a, a speed ramp at the end of them, just to kind of give it a little more motion. So you can see, so see it's too slow. And then they all go down to the end size. So it's pretty cool, but they are gonna be way too slow. So we wanna move all these keyframes in, in way in. So we'll kind of move these in like this. Because uh, it's a pretty fast animation. So you'll see it here in one second when I go and hit this again. So, how to do a simple call out title boom. like this right here. Or move. Okay. So, not quite what I want yet. So, let's just fine tune these a little bit more. Zoom in a ways into them. So, I want these to kind of go fast. So, it kind of brings your attention to it. How to do a simple call out title. Okay. Bloop, bloop, bloop. okay, so now that we have our circles made up, the next thing we're gonna do is create our line. And we're gonna go up here to our pen tool, grab our pen tool, and we're just gonna click here in the center of this one. And we're gonna kinda go you know, out here. And then we're gonna go to the, well, let's see here, which way do we wanna go with this? Let's go like this. We're gonna go out here. And we're gonna hit shift. Go out here, and that makes, so shift will make a, a straight line. And as you can see, we have ourselves a fill. So we wanna make this a stroke. So we're gonna go to fill, hit none, hit okay, go to our stroke, make our solid color, hit okay. And now I've got a line that comes out of it. And I want this line to come out of the back. Uh, I guess it can come out of the white, that's okay. It'll look good coming out of the white. If you want it to come out of the back, you can just drag this below it and now it'll come out of the back of the whole animation. But since it's white on the front of it, we can have it coming out of the white. It doesn't look that bad. Um, I highly recommend going and grabbing this plugin called Butt Capper, and it just makes, so you can see here that this is a square at the end of this. If I go to Butt Capper and I hit the all, set all strokes to round cap, it automatically creates a round cap for your straight line. I, I love that plugin, it works really well. Um, highly recommend that one. Okay, so now that we have that done, our next step is to animate this line. So as soon as the bubbles, the circles, I call them bubbles, the circles pop, we want this line to shoot out. So we're gonna use something called a trim path. So we're gonna go down here, or we're gonna click on this, um, click on this little arrow here, and that's going to open up our effects tab, uh, or our contents tab, and we go to add, and we're going down here to trim paths. So now that we have our trim paths, we click on trim paths. We're gonna go to end, hit a keyframe, and that's gonna be our end point. And we're gonna drag that over to the side. Next, we're gonna go to this 100% here and we're gonna drag that down. You see how I just make that line disappear? I'm gonna drag that down to zero. And then as soon as I hit enter, it's gonna make that line pop out, okay? So we just set two keyframes for that. Well now, we're gonna go through and see when that white bubble pops, we want our keyframe to start and our and to end shortly after. So here we have now do a simple call out title. our call out title just popped out. Okay, so bloop, that comes out, awesome, done there. Now we're going to create our text anim our text yeah, animation. So we're going to text, create a new text that's really big. Let's go to like 75. And I guess we can go Barlow Black, that works just fine. Click anywhere out here. Okay, so for our title, let's just call it text layer. Okay, so our text layer is there, and we're gonna grab this, and we're gonna set it next to it. In fact, let's, uh, let's have this go below it, so it's just something like that. Okay, so text layer. So this guy is going to be right like that. Okay, so we've got our text layer, which is just text layer. 
our line coming out. So now we need to animate our text layer and we can do a couple different animations. Um, for ease of use, let's just do a opacity. So let's set it at zero. And then as soon as this comes out, we're gonna set it to zero there. And we'll set it to a hundred there. Okay, so something along these lines. How to do a simple call out title like this right Text layer, okay. So now I'm gonna take all these together and I'm going to right click and go to pre-compose. I'm gonna call this my text animation. Boom, text animation. All right, so now that we have our text animation done, I'm gonna hit Y on my keyboard. I'm gonna drag this up on my anchor point to the center of my circles. And voila, now we have this text animation. And what is it not doing? It's not tracking yet. So it's just sitting there in the center of it. So now we need to open up a few things. One, we need to go to position here and we need to open, and I just hit P on my keyboard, opens up position. And I'm gonna do a drop down and I'm gonna see my attach points of my motion tracker. And as you can see here, there's this little fancy dancy attach point right here. What are we gonna do? We're gonna attach this thing. So we come over here to our quick whip property, quick pick, pick whip. I call it a quick whip, they call it a pick whip. That's lame, sorry. And I'm gonna grab that, click on it, and drag it down here to my attach point. Now that it's hooked up to it, you can see that my animation is gone and it's you know pretty close. Um, but where, where's my, see now it's following it, but it doesn't, but it's not following it on the actual thing. So now what do I do? Okay, so I'm going to go to my text animation, hit my Y on my keyboard again, and I'm going to drag this to where it sits on the lens itself, kind of just about where I had it, okay? So now, when I hit play. Hey guys, Carl here. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to do a simple call out title like this right here. Now it's hooked onto it. it moves with your now it moves with it. See, look at that. We're gonna put some motion blur on this so it kind of goes with it and looks like it's motion blur also. So see, there's motion blur there. Now when it moves fast, it blurs with it so it looks like it's another piece of it. So as it goes down, I'm going to hit, I'm gonna make it disappear because you can see I just go in nothing. So right around here, I'm gonna set a keyframe. I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard for opacity. Set a keyframe. And then I'm gonna go a few steps forward. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm gonna go zero. So now at the end there. Okay, perfect. So let's play it through one more time. Hey guys, Carl here. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to do a simple call out title like this right here. Where it moves with your or whatever you're doing with it. It's kind of cool, right? Let's get into it. Okay. So there's how to do a simple call out title in After Effects. You can get this way cleaner when you spend a lot of time on your motion tracker. I'm doing this quickly just to show you guys what it looks like. You can see in a lot of my other videos that the motion tracker stays with it a lot better but it does, but it gets the point across. Spend a lot of time on that motion tracker and you're, you're title will look a lot cleaner. So with that said, that's all I got on this guy. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. Have fun with it. Attach something to everything that you want to attach it to and just see what happens. All right. Thank you for watching. See you guys in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.